Hello and welcome back to chapter 1.2 from Stevens's Matrices, Vectors, and 3D Math. Here we're doing the third video from chapter 1.2 and we're basically just going to do the worksheet from that section. And um, what we're doing in this worksheet is we're taking the three systems of equations that we solved by hand from chapter 1.1. We have this first system and when we did that by hand, we found a unique solution where x1 is 5, 3, x2 is, sorry, x1 is 5, x2 is 3, and x3 is negative 1. For the second system, there were no solutions, and for this third system, we had infinitely many solutions with a general solution that took this form. All right. So I'm going to show you how to do this in MATLAB and the errors that you'll run into when you try to solve an inconsistent system or one with infinitely many um, solutions. Okay, so let's let's work with with this first problem. And so here's our here's our system, right? If you look at the coefficient matrix for this system, I get a one. There's no x2, so a zero and a negative three. So over here, a one is one zero negative three, right? And the second row is 2, 2, 9. And the third row is 0. There's no x1. 0, 1, 5. So the coefficient matrix that's associated with this system is this A1 that I have written in a MATLAB file. All right. And then the right-hand side for this system has an 8, a 7, and a negative 2 in a column vector. Right, 8, 7, negative 2, and that single apostrophe or the single quote takes the transpose, so it is now a column vector. So in order to get this solution, the solution to this system, if it has one, all I have to do is type a1 backslash b1. And I've already run this, so all of these matrices are in there. So a1 looks like that. B1 looks like that. If I do A1 backslash B1, there's my answer, 5, 3, negative 1, just like we got by hand in chapter 1.1. Doing the same thing for this second system, my coefficient matrix is now 0, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 3, 2, 5, negative 8, 7. And the right hand side is 8, 1, 1. So I put that in here. I've already inserted these matrices. So there's the coefficient matrix. There's the right-hand side. I use the transpose so that I make sure I'm using a column vector. And remember, when we did this by hand, we had an inconsistent system, no solutions. So A2, the coefficient matrix from the second system, B1, the right-hand side for the second system. So if I wanted a solution, I would just do A2 backslash, oh wait, B2. That's our right-hand side for the second system. So I have A2, B2. Right? Now if I do A2 backslash B2, I'm hoping for an answer. Notice it gives me a crazy answer. And what this is, is that's 1.0 times 10 to the 16th. Those numbers are huge. It looks like an answer. It is not. It's what's known as a, well, in this case, th there's no solution, right? Uh, and what it tells you is that the matrix is close to singular. We'll get into what that means or badly scaled. So you get an error, but it does in fact give you an answer, which is a little unfortunate, right? It's a type, it's called a least squares answer, but the, the, the point being, it is not an actual answer, right? When we did this by hand, we, we came to the conclusion that there was no solution, right? This is not a solution. And you can check, right? So let's make, let me make x2 equal to a2 backslash b2. So that's my solution, right? Now I want to check it. So how do I check it? I'll take a times x2. Oops, sorry, a2 times x2. All right. 
But now if you now that should give me B2. Notice they are not they're not the same. Right? So it actually is not a solution at all. Right? Okay. So it gave you an answer, it gave you a warning, but it gave you an answer, and that answer did not check out. So for our third system, we did this by hand, we got infinitely many solutions. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create the coefficient matrix, which is 1, 6, 2, 1, 5, 0, 0, 1, 2. All right? So that's our coefficient matrix. Our right-hand side consists of 10, 6, 4, put in the form of a column vector here. All right? And now I'm going to try to solve it. So I put in A3, B3. They've already I already ran this file, so these are already this 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 file's already been compiled, so these are already in memory. Um, so there they are. I want to get um, the solution. X3 equals A3 backslash B3. And if this had a unique solution, it would return it and all would be good. Notice what it does here. It um doesn't even return those those NANs. That's not a number, right? So there were infinitely many solutions, but it returned nothing. It said I can't do this, and you get a warning message. Uh, matrix is singular to working to working precision. Well, and we'll get into what singular means. That's actually in the next chapter. It has to do with the determinant. But notice, and let's just summarize what happened here. When there was a unique solution. We got it. It worked fine. When there was no solution, we actually got an answer, but it wasn't an answer. Right? We did get an error message. When we had infinitely many solutions, it gave no answer at all. Right? So it just goes to show that just because we have the software at our disposal, it doesn't immediately solve all of our problems. When we figure out that we don't have a unique solution, it takes a little bit of work by hand to figure out which of the other two scenarios are at play. All right? And MATLAB will give you an error message, but it might also give you an answer. So you've got to be careful if you're running some code or program that does this. It might be returning an answer and running just fine. You might not even see the little error message, but things could be going horribly wrong. All right, so that's a little uh, that's worksheet. Uh, three systems, uh, a lot can go on. And um, that wraps up chapter 1.2. I will see you at the video for chapter 1.3. Bye.